In this video, we're going to be focusing on the facing toolpath. Facing is usually the first machining operation performed in a part. It's used to cut away excess material and finish the highest flat face of the part. If you plan to follow along, open part 7.1 and save a copy of it in your working directory. To create a facing operation, we need to be on the CAM tab of the ribbon toolbar where we can select the face icon. The first thing we need to do is define a tool for our face in operation. So select the tool button. When the library opens, you'll notice I've already saved a one and a half inch diameter face mill inside of this part to streamline the process. So go ahead and select the face mill now and press select to assign it to our face in operation. As a note, when you're facing a part, you want to use a face mill whenever possible. The large diameter face mills and multiple carbide insert cutting edges provide a very high material removal rate. However, because face mills don't plunge well, we want to make sure that the tool path starts far enough away from the part so the tool doesn't plunge into the stock material. Thankfully, you will find that the facing tool path takes this into consideration. Now, with our tool selected, our speeds and feet are set by default. At this point, we're going to accept our facing toolpath and allow it to be generated. We can begin by looking at what the facing toolpath does. If you look down onto the top of the part, we can see the facing operation is plunging off the part and moving back and forth off the part. Similarly to how you would mow your lawn to remove all the material. Looking at the front of the part, the toolpath is machining down to the top face of the part. This is done by default without any geometry selected because our CAM software understands that the facing operation is typically working with the stock we defined in our job setup. With that, we can easily simulate the toolpath facing all the stock material down to the top face of the part. This now gives us an overview of what the facing toolpath does. In the next video, we're going to look at in detail all the various options we can change to control how this toolpath reacts.